Welcome back. And now we'll go take a look at again at the president's speech at the UN General Assembly, the 78th UN General Assembly. Joining us from New York, we have Mr. Laulu Akonde, former presidential aide. Thank you for joining us, Mr. Akonde. Good morning. Good morning. Thank you. Good morning. It looks like you are waiting to hit the bed in a few minutes. But hey, let's, <laughs> let's look at this. So the president's speech, and he said something, the end of his speech said something like, Africa is the key to the world's future, paraphrasing here. From what you heard there, from that speech, what's your takeaway? Yeah, uh, thank you. Uh, uh, clearly, this was uh, 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 quite a very notable uh, speech that uh, the president gave. Of course, you know, like he indicated himself, this was his first uh, speech as president of the Federal Republic of Nigeria. And uh, not only did he uh, speak for the Nigerian people, but he also made a, uh, some very important statements uh, on behalf of the of the African continent. Uh, you know, and that uh, uh, the phrase that uh, the, the paraphrase that you gave is just uh, 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 one of such very, uh, in my view, fundamental uh, 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 declaration, if you could say, that he made that look. Uh, it's over it, uh, the, the, the time that Africa uh, used to be seen as uh, as a place of people to be pitied is over. That that what Africa wants is a mutually beneficial uh, partnership. Uh, he, he spoke about four important things. Number one, he talked about the development of the continent, uh, and he said that what Africa is looking for is uh, uh, a, a mutually Benefic uh, beneficial uh, relationship, uh, namely that the international community ought to partner with Africa, and it did refer to the Marshall Plan, you know, uh, which of course uh, was was uh, the plan that was uh, put up uh, in the international community after uh, the end of the Second World War to to to, to sort of help uh, uh, Europe to recover. And he said, even though the circumstances of Africa is not compared to what happened in Europe after the war, but that, you know, uh, the same kind of commitment uh, that the international community, especially Western countries, gave to the rebuilding of Europe is the kind of request uh, 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 that, that, that Africa is making for, for serious political commitment and, and mutuality in terms of international relations. He spoke about, secondly, he spoke about democracy. You know, and, and I think this was a very important one, of course, uh, because of what was happening, what has been happening in, in, in West and uh, Central Africa uh, with the spate of coups that we have all over the place, especially uh, the question of Niger. You know, uh, uh, so, so he spoke and, and said that, look, the, 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 the solution to the, uh, to, 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 the, to the problems is not uh, coups, that coups are not only wrong, but are legal. And he did say, uh, at that meeting, that he was looking forward as chairman of ECOWAS uh, to partnership from 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 the international international community on how uh, to stem the type of uh, of coups in, uh, uh, in, in in the continent. Uh, and also, he then talked about, and I find this, this uh, very interesting. He talked about what he called the dark channel of commerce, the dark channel of commerce uh, that has been perpetrated in the international community, uh, in, in places like Africa and other developing countries, where uh, there has been a pillage of, uh, of, of mineral resources, you know, uh, by foreign countries, you know, taking advantage of, uh, of, 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 of mineral resources, you know, in, in places, you know, like Africa, as a matter of fact, like in place in Nigeria, you know, where they come and basically steal uh, 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 mineral resources in all kinds of illicit uh, transactions and taking away uh, the, the, the resources of, of Africa and other continents, you know, in a way that uh, not only uh, uh, is blightful and despicable, but a way that, that, that perpetuates uh, the poverty of, uh, of, the, of the people and, and, and also uh, promotes conflict. You, now, I think, know, for me, yeah, that was, that's correct. Yes, the president's words, strong words, as some in some in some quarters have described his words as very strong words, speaking not only for 
Nigeria, but also for Africa as well. In fact, it looks like the president was a spokesperson at that point for Nigeria, the West Africa, and the African continent. Um, but the question now is, having put out those words, he has a team, he has a people that work with him, and, and some of the African leaders heard him also. What should be done? What actions should be taken in line with these words that have gone out right now? Because it's not enough to speak it. Some things need to begin to happen towards that. And I, I agree with you. And, and uh, I, I think what the president has done, uh, in my view, is to retake, you know, uh, he has made an attempt to retake uh, the place of importance, you know, uh, the, the significance of the Nigerian voice in the international community, the, the significance of uh, Nigeria as a voice for the black race, as a voice for the African continent, as a voice for the developing world, a voice that cannot be ignored. Now, the first step, now you're right. So what else must follow? I think uh, what must follow uh, uh, ought, ought to be a clear uh, enunciation and articulation of a foreign policy that backs up, you know, uh, the, the the tone and the attitude uh, of uh, of the president's speech at Onga, and then uh, a matching up of all those things, especially regarding uh, the the economic relationship, you know, uh, because he did call out uh, the international community uh, because he said even uh, concerning what he called the pilot of resources from Africa, he did raise a very important question. He said, well, is this by design or by accident? I mean, that, that's a very, very strong and bold statement, uh, you know, which clearly, you know, we make anybody from Nigeria or Africa very proud that you have somebody who can actually look into the eye of the international community and say that, look, you guys, we can't continue to have a situation where uh, there's a pilot of our resources. But to your point, yes, uh, the, the president must now uh, gather together, in my view, uh, uh, the, you know, the, 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 his, his, his foreign policy team. And of course, we do have a lot of very uh, excellent uh, foreign policy experts and people with very uh, great credentials, you know, people like uh, 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 Chief Ayanku, Professor Ibrahim Gambari, you know, uh, Professor Bolaji Akiemi. Uh, he, he needs to be able to bring these people together to formulate, you know, uh, uh, a foreign policy that we, you know, take it from where he has stopped. You know, he has used his inaugural speech at the UN, which is a very important venue, to say that, look, we don't want business as usual. He, he did say, uh, uh, you know, uh, for instance, that, that the question is not whether Nigeria is open for business, that yes, Nigeria is open for business, but the question is that, is the international community ready uh, for, 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 for a relationship that is based on equality and, and partnership. So, so you are right. What the president must do now uh, is to gather together, you know, uh, his foreign policy uh, team and articulate a clear foreign policy uh, that will reflect some of these important ideas that he has spoken about, some of these important agenda that he has set, uh, so that in all the things that we do, at the level of international relations, starting from, of course, uh, what, what, what is our domestic policy, the world can see that we have a, a, a new Nigeria uh, 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 that wants to, to retake its place in international uh, uh, relationship and, and, and also be the, 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 the spokesperson for the development of, of Africa and the developing world. So yes, uh, this is just the beginning of, uh, of what has to happen. Okay, thank you, Nyota. Um, Mr. Akonde, let's assume that uh, the advocacy as contained in the president's speech and in the speech of other presidents who spoke at the um, assembly are, uh, you know, somewhat encapsulated in the goals of um, you know, the sustainable development goals that were reviewed from 2015. Um, what, are you worried that this is just going to be another talk shop? Especially considering that the Deputy Secretary General, who is in charge of uh, those goals, that's Nigeria's Amina Mohammed, 
has expressed concern to the international media that the group of G20 uh, wealthy nations are not funding um, these goals as they should? Well, that, that, that's, uh, that's a very important uh, uh, point. Um, and I think, you know, uh, the, to, to, to the point of uh, the level of funding that has come from the international community, like in several other instances, it's always uh, below par, below expectation. There is uh, a lot of promises, you know, uh, and people, you know, uh, you know, heads of states and governments, you know, come out and uh, they express a commitment to, to some of these major uh, uh, important goals like the sustainable development goals. Uh, but of course, when it gets to the point of doing uh, you don't see that same level of commitment. So, yeah, you, it, it, it's, it's true that uh, we have to see a, a, a higher uh, demonstration of support and commitment. Uh, and, of course, even from, uh, from, 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 from our own country also, it, it will be important also uh, to, 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 to organize the government in a way that, uh, that, that this... Uh, uh, these goals are pursued in a more diligent way. And I mean specifically that there, that there has to be a, a greater engagement of the subnationals uh, in, in, in many of the, 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 in the pursuit of many of those goals. Because if you look at many of those sustainable development goals, uh, these are areas you know, that, that, that the state governments and the, the, the local governments have uh, uh, you know uh, constitutional jurisdiction. So, so one of the things that has to happen internally, domestically, is that the, the federal government must work more, must find a way to engage the subnationals uh, in the pursuit of this uh, sustainable development. Well, Mr. Kone, perhaps uh, that's where the challenge is, really. If you if you don't mind me butting in, because I mean, you may also want to share your own experience. How open? our state government, the subnationals, uh, in terms of these collaborations with the federal government? Because if the collaborations were significant enough, uh, some of the issues we are dealing with, grappling with literally, uh, will probably have been resolved. Take, for instance, the right of way we mentioned in passing this morning. Uh, the states and the federal government ought to have some measure of collaboration. Uh, that doesn't seem to be happening. The uh, Minister of um, Solid Minerals also said Nigeria's solid minerals sector, for instance, is worth something in the region of $700 billion. But they are domiciled in states, deposited in states. So there has to be that collaboration. How open are those collaborations or are state governments, subnationals, to those collaborations that can fast track these development initiatives? Yeah, a, a very important point, uh, uh, you that you raise, you know. And by the way, you know, uh, I, I know that by now, Nigerians must have noted that you have, uh, you know, this very uh, solid understanding about how states must come into the picture. And it's a very important, it's, it's a very important point. Now, I think one of the things that the, 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 the federal government ought to do is to approach uh, a stick and carrot uh um, you know, uh, uh, is, is to adopt, adopt a stick and carrot approach to to these things. You know, the, uh, the federal government should tie incentives and some consequences to uh, how, how how states are supposed to step up in these important areas. Uh, for instance, look at the issue of of uh, of education. You know, so so by a constitutional mandate. Uh, Every child, every Nigerian child, ought to have education. Uh, I think for the first nine years, compulsory. You know, but guess what? These issues are domiciled in the subnationals, in the states, in the local governments. You know, and as you know, uh, you know, Ayo, uh, that there, there, there is even the, uh, the 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 funding, the federal funding for universal uh, uh, education. I think it's superb that in many instances, the states are not coming up with their own uh, matching grant to be able to tap from what is available uh, money at the federal level. So, you know, so, so the, 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 the question of getting the states to, to, to collaborate is very critical. There can be no development, 
and let's put it very clear there can be no development there can be no sustainable development in a country in a federal uh, uh, country like ours without an active collaboration a consistent organized continuous active collaboration between the federal government and the state government and so so what i would suggest is that the federal government has to take this thing much much serious than before and adopt a stick and carrot uh, approach and i think i think the president uh, has shown promise uh, uh you remember that uh, a few months ago uh, the president decided that look we're going to hold back a portion of the, uh, the, the, the the increase that we have seen in federal allocation uh, for the purposes of infrastructure. You know, of course, you know, there was a quite a bit of uh, uh, altercation and argument at the Federal Allocation Committee when that idea came up. But guess what? The president insisted and he got his way. So, so it is that kind of engagement on a consistent basis, you know, uh, to let the states know that, look, this thing has to be done because you guys in the states, you know, that is where development happens. And it will be useful even also for, for, for Nigerians to understand that all the focus, all the attention, all the criticisms, all the observations uh, shouldn't be going to the FEDRA. Yes, the FEDRA carries, you know, the, the, the biggest body. Everybody knows that. And we will continue to engage, you know, uh, with the federal government and call them out and ask questions. Okay. And be okay. All right, thank you very much, uh, Mr. Laulu Akonde, former presidential. Thank you for coming in this morning and for sharing your thoughts. We'll leave it at that point. Thank you once again. I wish you well. Thank you, my brother. Have a nice one. All right.